Hello and welcome to the GYO surgery series. This will be the first of several different explanations of individual surgeries that we perform in Gynonc, including some photos that I'll have referenced as well as some handmade drawings. The first uh, surgery that we'll be going over is the splenectomy. Uh, and I only own the drawings. Other pictures will be referenced on individual slides and at the end. This is for educational purposes only. This is not intended to be medical advice. So reference this lovely picture on the right. Uh, the removal of the spleen is occasionally required to achieve optimal surgical cytoreduction in ovarian cancer. And so knowing the relevant anatomy is important. And um, so we'll go over the ligaments um, attaching to the spleen as well as the blood supply to the spleen. Uh, so there are approximately five ligaments, the splenophrenic ligament, the splenorenal, the pancreaticosplenic, the splenocolic, and the gastrosplenic ligaments. Uh, they are labeled here, one through four, we have one, two, three, four, splenophrenic, which you can't see, but the diaphragm would be up here, the splenorenal, the pancreaticosplenic, the splenocolic, and then over here we have the gastrosplenic. Each of these ligaments are transected during a splenectomy. And then as far as our blood supply goes, is a little bit easier. You just have the splenic artery and the splenic vein, um, as you can see here. These come off the celiac trunk. Um, the artery comes off the celiac trunk, and the celiac trunk, as you may remember, is the splenic artery, the left gastric, and the common hepatic, and then the splenic vein coming back into the portal vein. The basic steps of a splenectomy are entering the lesser sac, mobilizing the spleen, and then ligating the vessels, which sounds very easy. Um, however, in practice, um, is definitely scary for gynonks. There is an anterior or posterior approach, and the choice depends on the distribution of disease, whatever um, approach would be easier based on disease, and uh, I will be going over the anterior approach in this short lecture. So first, entering the lesser sac of the omentum, you want to identify the gastrocolic ligament. This lies between the stomach's greater curvature and the transverse colon. Um, the anterior relief of the omentum attaches to the greater curvature of the stomach via the gastrocolic ligament, and the posterior relief attaches to the uh, margin of the transverse colon. And the lesser sac is kind of between these two leaves. So identifying the ligament and then transecting this in order to open the lesser sac. The dissection, then this is uh, another depiction of opening the lesser sac, but the omentum is no longer there. Um, and you. As you can see here, this is the uh, gastrocolic ligament here. The dissection continues along the transverse colon with mobilization of the entire splenic flexure of the colon to eventually reach the splenocolic ligament highlighted here. And then you're also dissecting upward to the greater curvature of the stomach towards the gastrosplenic ligament. That's here. Once mobilized, you can grasp the spleen and elevate it medially. This will expose the splenophrenic ligament here, and you can continue to dissect the spleen from the uh, gastrosplenic ligament as well as the splenocolic ligament. So you can see the gastrosplenic ligament in this picture as well as the splenocolic ligament here. Um, you'll continue dissecting that and then also the splenophrenic ligament with this being the diaphragm. The gastrosplenic ligament is the most vascular and contains those short gastric arteries. So um, we are very careful in ligating and dividing these. And then finally, the spleen is elevated to the incision. Um, you do some blunt dissection in order to identify the splenic artery and the splenic vein. Um, the, each one of these vessels are individually ligated and the artery is ligated first in order to prevent engorgement of the spleen. You um, can use as depicted here a right angle placed underneath the artery or um, individual 
vein, artery, or vascular pedicle, and you can use a 2O silk. Um, you will then place a second 2O silk, um, and then on the proximal end, you can either tie or um, clip this end, and then divide the artery, vein, or um, other vascular pedicle. And then if you're done with the artery, you do the vein. And that is the end of splenectomy.